Hey guys, this is Jensen here once again, and today I'm going to be doing a little bit of different content. I'm going to be doing some self-promotion about the book that I wrote and published earlier in the year. It is titled From Amateur to Pro, The Esports Pursuit of Mastery. This is what the book looks like on the cover. It's an orange cover with my name written in Comic Sans one for, for those of you guys who like the memes. And this is what it kind of covers, right? The book is split up into three distinct segments, the amateur segment, the pro-am segment, and the professional segment. Now, the question I get very often is what does pro-am stand for? I don't think that this is an official term, but that's just kind of what I termed it. It's the, it stands for professional amateur. Uh, it refers to a transition phase where you start to get really serious about something, but you aren't really at the professional stage where people are paying you to do it just yet. So this book is about um, looking at the some of the anecdotal stories and looking at some of the things that happen at each stage of a person's progression from amateur to professional. So the amateur segment has a chapter in it uh, where I'm, I'm just going to do a little bit of a summary for each chapter in this case to give you guys a better idea of what's in the content of my book. So it covers the amateur mindset, which covers the four types of motivations that players uh, experience or the people experience, which are money, uh, socials slash relationships, recognition, as well as mastery. And these four motivating factors is what I've noticed tends to be a common trend. And it, it can be kind of different for, for, for everybody. But, and these things will change as people move through these three different phases. There is also a chapter about social dynamics in a amateur or all the way up to a professional environment where it explores from a gender theory kind of perspective. So for those of you who are into topics um, about masculinity and hierarchy, this was a rather interesting chapter that I wrote that frames it about how masculinity shapes particular hierarchies within the gaming culture itself. And there's the opening chapter of this entire segment talks about serious fun, where it kind of like pulls apart the oxymoronic concept of serious fun. And how can something serious be fun? And how can fun be serious? The second segment talks about the pro M transition, right? Where you usually are faced with a choice. Like if you're really good at gaming, you're really good at studies, you're often faced with a choice. Like do I choose to forego school to pursue this? Or am I forced to choose between certain certain paths, right? Like the way that our current society is it kind of forces us to choose and take certain paths. Okay, am I going to go into STEM field? Am I going to pursue my passions and do something else instead? And this kind of explores based off a talk that I had to give some of my juniors when I went back to my high school about the path that's taken. What is it like to pursue and explore a new industry that's up and coming? What is it like to pursue something that might go against your training as somebody who went to, to a school for math and science and pursued an engineering degree and do something out outside of a STEM field, right? And what's it like to pursue the path that's taken? And the big story here is to pursue the path of mastery instead, which is the title of the book. And the second chapter is about snowballing your luck. In this case, I get a lot of questions about how to get into eSports. And I think that there's a lot of ways you can get into it. And I think you find your most suitable way into it. But once you've gotten your foot in the door, it is very important to snowball your first opportunity go out there connect with people and these are some of the tips that i give in this chapter itself uh, the third is about time hacking which i think is very specific to the pro and phase of this um, progression where usually in the pro, pro and phase you have to juggle multiple things at the same time because you're not fully paid as a full-time person to be pursuing esports right but at the same time, you still have your other obligations to your family and uh, to your school or whatever other requirements there are. And I always say that in this one, it's about budgeting your time. And a very important lesson here is that your prioritization should always put family and school first. So especially if you're in school, your family and school should be your priorities number one and two. But you have to learn how to budget your time and separate all the other things out so that esports and your pursuit of this profession comes as the third most important thing. 
And the fourth one is something that I'm personally very passionate about. It's about transferable skill sets from things that you've learned in school over into esports and vice versa, right? Particularly from esports back into academia, it's something that I think is not explored enough. In particular, I had quite a fair bit of synergy doing an engineering degree and being able to use the Taoist perspective to structure the way that I was coaching. In particular, we were doing quite a fair bit of uh, design thinking, which allowed me to use the same concepts and apply it to developing solutions for players as a coach. But more interestingly enough, I talk about how players, they develop abilities to rapidly prototype and the, the thinking that is schools struggle with each other's point of times and how do you get people to be to embrace failure how do you get people to be okay with experimenting and having the experiment you negative results and the magical thing about gaming is that a game is about 15 to 30 minutes which is long enough for you to be invested in it so that you actually want to succeed but yet it's short enough where you don't feel punished for it whereas if you do a project in school you go in there it's a three month long, month long project and you only get one iteration out of it whereas in games you get to do this repetitive iterations right where you can just make these small changes to improve on things to find the desired result you want at the end of the day and the third segment of the book deals with the professional uh, aspects of the progression right where I share some of my anecdotes uh, being a professional esports coach and one of the big stories that I share is um, about how it is important to navigate cultures and if you saw my one of the videos on my channel where I talked about uh, the disastrous summer split that I had in 2020 and was due to my inability to identify that the most crucial thing that needed to be solved was the culture. I share a similar story as well when I went over to the LDL or what was known as the LSPL back then and I was coaching this team and uh, Yaka was on the team actually and the approach that I had was not a good culture fit for the team and how I learned a very uh, important lesson from that. Up managing is an important skill to have that uh, people often see leadership as an absolute form of power, but there's always this concept of middle middle leaders, right, or middle management, where um, it kind of gets a bad rap of sorts, where you're seen as a middleman of sorts, and you're seen as like this person who's supposed to like, wheeze around people and stuff like that. But up managing is a very key aspect of being in such a position. And very often as a coach, you have superiors to answer to and you are in charge of a, some people on the ground itself. And being able to manage expectations and communicate things with your superiors so that they are able to then sort out the vision and make sure that you are able to translate that to the rest of the team is a very important skill set to have in this industry itself. Uh, Self-journaling is something that I talked a little bit about where um, I used it as a very powerful tool for myself where I, I would write and reflect on my daily process. And it, this also kind of like details how you can use a similar method as well so that you can use your journaling process to gain more insights into your methods as a coach um, and explore emotions as well as a means of emotional mitigation or exploring your own emotions as a whole. And I think most of the people on this channel, the thing that you'll be most interested in, this is covered in this book, where I have a, a segment on it where I talk about uh, the systems that I've developed and the systems that I've used for in-game performance and to help players learn concepts and systems as a whole. And you can find some of this on my channel as well, but I wrote a segment about it in my book where I talked about some of the themes that I've worked on previously and how I use such systems to help the players learn and improve. And if you're interested in getting this book, uh, you can get it uh, for this amount. Do contact me uh, at the Jubilee Islam on Twitter. Send me a direct message and uh, you can get this book if you send me this amount of money based on where you are. Uh, I, the prices vary due to having to post it. Uh, but send me this amount to, via PayPal and do include a valid email address. Sorry, do include a valid physical, not email not email, valid physical address and means of contact so that I can mail the book to you. Right? This book is only available as a physical copy and there is no digital there is no digital copy available. So uh, if you liked my content and if you like the videos that I've been doing and would like to support me, the, the free things that you can do is to like this video, subscribe to my channel and if you want to get more insight into coaching or are somebody looking for some advice be it where you are on, on the progression right from amateur to professional uh, you can consider getting my book and if you do buy it i will be very thankful for your support 
and with that that wraps up to this video um that wraps up to this video this was jensen uh, there was no world's content today but tomorrow i'll be resuming uh world's content as i will be doing a video every day this actually marks day number 30 of videos that i've done consecutively ever since i started on 22nd september and with that this is jensen worlds happens this weekend semi-finals g2 versus dumb one top esports versus sune you get my tactical breakdowns on the day before with that get hyped for worlds